Let's go ahead and get you set up with a development environment. We'll be using VirtualBox. VirtualBox is free software that allows you to create a virtual computer within the computer with an operating system of your choice, regardless of what system your computer is using. You'll want to navigate to the link in the description at virtualbox.org, then select the appropriate package for the operating system your computer is running. I'm using Windows 10, so I'll select this link. If you're using Mac OS, you'll want to select this one below, and so on and so forth. Next, you'll want to run the executable file that just downloaded. Now let's go ahead and step through the setup and installation wizard that just launched. And click install. Once VirtualBox is finished installing, go ahead and click Finish and select Start Oracle VM VirtualBox after installation. After launching, VirtualBox should show you a display like this. If it prompts you to install USB drivers, just go ahead and select Yes and hit Next through the prompts. However, before we can start your new virtual machine, you're going to need to download something called an ISO file. An ISO file is a copy of what would be saved to a hard drive or optical disk that allows you to run a computer on top of whatever hardware that you have. Let's go ahead and get the desktop version of Ubuntu 19.10. This is the currently latest version of Ubuntu out there. You may wish to choose a new version in the future. Go ahead and click download and make a note of where your computer saves the file. Ubuntu 19.10 is just over 2 gigabytes, so this may take quite a while to download. Once your ISO file has finished downloading, go back to VirtualBox and click New. Give your virtual machine a name and select Type Linux and version Ubuntu 64-bit. And click Next. Now you need to decide how much RAM, or random access memory, to allocate to your virtual machine. Your computer only has so much RAM. RAM is like your computer's short-term memory. It stores data in a way that can be accessed faster than your hard drive. The amount of RAM you have is a driver of how fast or slow your computer works. Before deciding how much RAM to give your virtual machine access to, let's find out how much your computer has to give. Since I'm using Windows 10, I'm going to search for About Your PC and take a look here under Installed RAM. It says I have 32 gigabytes. Now you need to decide how much RAM to leave for your computer that you're running VirtualBox on versus the VirtualBox virtual machine that you'll be developing on. The more RAM you give your virtual machine, the faster it can run, but on the flip side, the RAM that you allocate to your virtual machine can effectively be taken away from your actual computer. I already have a pretty good amount of RAM, so I'm going to go ahead and allocate about 4 megabytes, excuse me, gigabytes to my virtual machine, and click Next. Next, you need to create a virtual hard disk. This is like the SSD, solid state drive, or optical hard disk that stores all your files on your physical computer. Before deciding how much memory to allocate to your virtual machine's hard disk, you'll first want to make note of how much your computer has to give. I'm using Windows, so if I open File Explorer and select this PC, it tells me I have 682 gigabytes free. Next, you'll want to think about how you'll be using your virtual machine. Medical code and value sets like SNOMED, LOINC, or RxNorm can get pretty large. I'd recommend at least 10 gigabytes. Select Create a Virtual Hard Disk Now and hit the Create button. If you click Expert Mode, you'll notice that you can adjust the amount of memory you give it with this slider here. I'm going to go with 15 gigabytes and click Create. Now your new virtual machine should show up here on the left. Select it and click the green arrow here. 
Now a new window will pop up prompting you to select a startup disk. This is where that ISO file you downloaded earlier comes into use. Click the folder button here and navigate to that ISO file in downloads or wherever you saved it to. Now click the add button and select the ISO file that you'd like to use and hit open. Once your ISO file appears under the not attached list, select it and click choose. Now that your ISO file is showing up under the Select Startup Disk menu, go ahead and click Start. Now give it a few minutes for your new Ubuntu virtual machine to start up for the very first time. Once your virtual machine has finished starting up, go ahead and select your language and click Install Ubuntu. Next, select your keyboard layout and click Continue. I'm going to go ahead and choose a minimal installation, but if you'd like to have an Office software suite like LibreOffice, go ahead and select Normal Installation and click Continue. You'll probably want to go ahead and leave the default option selected here. If you'd like to encrypt your installation, you'll want to check this box right here. But if you're just using this for development, you can probably go ahead and leave your operating system unencrypted for now. Go ahead and click Install Now. Go ahead and click Continue here. Then select your time zone on the map and hit Continue. Now you'll want to type your name, select your computer's name, a username, and type a strong password and click Continue. Now your virtual machine will need to load for a while, but once it's done, select Restart Now. When you see the text appear that says, please remove the installation medium, then press Enter, go ahead and hit the Enter key. Now let's go ahead and open up a terminal window. Click Activities in the top left and type Terminal and select the icon that appears. First, let's go ahead and see if Git is already installed. So type Git dash dash V and hit Enter. As you can see, it isn't already installed, but we can use this line right here to install Git for us. When it asks for the sudo password, this is the same password you selected when creating your virtual machine. Type it here. Note that you didn't see any text or asterisks go across the screen as I type my password. That is completely normal in your Linux terminal. Type Y when prompted. To ensure that Git installed properly, go ahead and type git dash dash version to verify that Git installed and check what version that you have. Now let's take a quick tour of our Ubuntu file system. Type ls to see a list of the folders and documents inside of the directory that we're currently inside. Now let's go ahead and make a new folder or directory with the make dir command, that's mkdir, and we'll give it a name test. Hit enter, now hit ls again, and you can see our new folder is right here. So how do we move our terminal window from the current directory, home, into our new directory, test? You'll use the cd, or change directory command, to move to our new folder, test. Type cd, test, and hit enter. Now if there are any files inside of our directory, test, we could type ls to see the files and subfolders within test, but since it's empty, you don't see anything. 
Now let's say we want to go back from test to the home directory just above it. You do cd dot dot and hit enter. And now we're back in home. Now go ahead and click the icon here on the left that looks like a filing cabinet or files. Look familiar, right? This is our home directory that we saw in the terminal and here is our test directory that we just made. Any files that you put in the test directory using the terminal will show up here in the files. And vice versa, if you put any files in here by copying them, they'll then show up when you type the ls command inside your terminal window. Speaking of putting files inside of our test directory, let's go ahead and do just that while testing out our new git commands. You can use tab completion to populate the rest of your name when typing the name of your folder. Go ahead and open a web browser by clicking the Firefox icon on the top left. Go ahead and type open emr github into the address bar to google it and select the link that shows up. Navigate to the icon that says clone or download, click it and copy the link here to your clipboard. Now go back to your terminal window and type sudo git clone and then paste the link that you copied from the OpenEMR GitHub. Type your sudo password and hit enter. Again, it's completely normal not to see anything appear as you type your sudo password make a copy of the OpenEMR Git repository on your virtual machine. Type ls and you'll see that now there is a folder called OpenEMR inside of that previously empty directory called test. Let's go ahead and cd into that new folder and type ls to take a quick look. Type the command cat, that's C-A-T, docker-compose.yaml to take a quick look at the contents of our docker compose file. This file tells docker how to build the individual containers that are required to run OpenEMR, including MariaDB, and PHP MyAdmin, which is used in the development version. If you need to change the passwords, you'll do so here before running the docker compose up command. So how do we get docker onto our virtual machine? First, you type the command sudo apt install docker.io, hit enter, and type your sudo password. Type Y when it asks if you want to continue, and let this run for a while. Once that command finishes running, you'll want to type sudo apt, that's apt, install docker-compose. Type Y when it asks if you'd like to continue, and let that run until it's finished. When that command has finished running, next you'll do sudo docker-compose up-d. The dash d stands for detached. That means that it's going to be running in the background and not take up your terminal window. Once that command is finished running, check on the status of your Docker containers by typing sudo docker ps a, where a stands for all. And it looks like they're all up. Once your Docker containers are up, open up your web browser and navigate to localhost colon 8300 open another tab, 
and navigate to localhost colon 8310 and log into PHP my admin with default password open EMR open EMR click go and verify that you're able to get into the database management software go back to the open EMR tab and log in with admin ADMIN and password PASS and click login. Once you're logged in, it should take you to the calendar screen showing that you've successfully authenticated into your local copy of OpenEMR.